And I'm like trying to. <laughs> you said oh, you got little right. kids running around the house. We got we got players running. Around the house. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, you know, so, some kids are older than others. <laughs> right, exactly. who, who was that? Was that Riggs? Yeah, that was Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll tell you what, Coach, we're going to go ahead and get into it. Uh, we have uh, BGA's new head boys basketball coach, Trey Meyer, on the uh, show with us today. Uh, Trey has, has made many stops in his coaching journey. He was a student assistant at Clemson. Um, he was a grad, grad assistant at TSU. He's had stints as assistant coaches at Miami of Ohio, at Furman University. He was a player development coach at, uh, at College of Charleston uh, before his uh, last stop was uh, as an assistant at Presbyterian College. Um, and now he got hired at Battleground Academy uh, back, in, back in the spring. Coach, uh, appreciate you coming on today, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate y'all doing this. I'm Honored to be on there, and uh, like I said, just looking forward to talking some ball with you guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll tell you, hey, talk since I wasn't going on in your life since uh, since getting this PGA job. Wow, uh, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, for us, like you know, all the places you mentioned, it's just it's been another move, and moving, you know, the more children you have, the harder it is. Um, you know, we're obviously very experienced in moving, so we've got it down to about an art, but. You know, this move is different because we're moving away from home, which my wife and I asked her from South Carolina. So we're moving away from home. Um, so we're going to see less of family. But I did this because we did this um, because wanted to be a head coach. Yeah. You know, when I first started my coaching journey, I was coaching AAU. And that's really when I fell in love with coaching. And I just had a group of seven or eight guys. We had some random jerseys. And we threw them on, and everybody looked at us at the other end and thought they were going to whoop us. And we had a pretty good team, and we surprised people. And that was kind of when I fell in love with coaching. So as I went through my college career, I always knew I wanted to be a head coach. And, you know, I'm 35 now, getting a little bit older. And these things are hard to get, you know, even being fortunate enough to be the head coach at BGA. I mean, that was a, that was a tough process. And there's a lot of really good candidates that wanted that job. So I don't know how I got it, but I did. But I'm really, really thankful um, so, you know, just moving up here, getting settled in and trying to create an identity, you know, at the school with our basketball program, because there hadn't been, you know, hadn't been a ton of success since, uh, since Nate was out there getting buckets. So no, the year after was probably <laughs> since because they had a pretty good year after I left. <laughs> How's everything been? Been good. Been good. I got out there and played with those guys after school today. We played in the middle school gym. So. Oh, really? How'd that go? Yeah. It was fun. It was funny. Uh, so, Nate, you get this. I went out there, and I had four ninth graders with me, and we went out there and swept the floor five straight games. And there I stepped go. off and let one of the eighth graders pop in because I wanted him to play. Because, I, you know, my point wasn't to go out there and show them that I know how to play. Mm -hmm. But I just went out there, moved to basketball, talked on defense, set some yeah. screens, tried to teach them what a good quality shot was. We just kept winning. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and it wasn't because of me. I slid the eighth grader in, and they won the next one. And they were beating the juniors and seniors. And I was just like, guys, we gotta learn how to win. You know, you gotta learn how to yeah. win a game, whether that's a pickup game, a scrimmage. I mean, winning is winning. You know, so yeah. just trying to teach that—that's a hard thing. Yeah, and probably uh, being super positive with them too, and encouraging yep. them compared to belittling and. Uh, making them probably feel less of themselves. Like they're ninth graders and still high schoolers. They don't love ball like we love ball. So no, oh yeah, you're right. I mean, the first time they missed a shot, you'd have thought they missed the game winner, and they shoot. You would have thought they shot five thousand shots a day, and they just missed the, the game winner. <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys, just get ready for the next one. That was a great shot. You know, if you get it again, take it again. But it's it's exactly what you said. You know, because we had one kid streak down the floor today. Another guy hits him with a beautiful pass right in the hands. Kid just fumbles it right out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And I was telling him, I was like, guys, at that moment, you just go to your teammate and just encourage him. I mean, he, he didn't mean to drop it, you know, like lift him up mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. So just all those little things we're trying to conquer, you know. So, yeah. But they're sure. so important, so important. So, Absolutely. Well, I'm going to shift back for a second. Um, so, Asa, we were talking about um, Coach's journey. We've talked about how he's settling in. Do you want to hit any more on that before I move to somewhere else? Uh, take it on, Nate. Let's take it. All right. So, tell me a little bit about Rising Coaches. Asa, I don't know if you mentioned that in the bio, but um, co-founded Rising Coaches. Um, I would love to hear, one, how, why you started Rising Coaches or even how it came to mind. Yep. Right. So, I was a student manager at Clemson. 
and Adam Gordon was a graduate assistant at Clemson and Andy Farrell was a video coordinator. Um, and literally we're just out one night sitting around shooting the breeze talking. And at that time there was something called the Villa seven, I believe it was. And it was like a summit for assistant coaches that wanted to be head coaches. And, you know, we were just talking about all that. And, you know, for us, like we couldn't get in something like that. So we were thinking, There's nothing out there for support staff or younger guys that are trying to, you know, become assistant coaches or even, even Dobos, you know? So we're like, heck, let's come up with this deal. Let's try to do something for that audience. And once we did that, we coordinated it to where it was built around the recruiting schedule. So we had it right before like a recruiting event in Vegas when we first started it. So the coaches are already coming out there. Um, it was fairly easy to get really good quality speakers and you know, it was, we get it for a cheap price and before you know it, the thing just kind of took off on its own. And then really Adam Gordon's the one running it now, him and Andy, they, they were, they did so much more work than I did, but I was just with <laughs> them when we came up with the idea. And like I said, it just kind of ran itself, but there was nothing out there for that. There's so many young hungry coaches out there and they're looking to get involved and they're looking to learn. And uh, there just wasn't anything for that at that time. So that was kind of how it came about. So how exactly, how exactly does rising coaches help a guy like myself or like Nate, you know, move up in the coaching world, get connected with people? How, how exactly do y'all go about helping, uh, helping young coaches, you know, get where they want to go? Well, obviously you got to want to help yourself before somebody else helps you. But, you know, like the first thing when it started was it was just a conference. That's all it yeah. was. So you would sign up, you would go to the conference, you'd stay there for three days. And you'd listen to people that have literally been on a journey and started where you were and things they learned along the way and then advice they would give. And then looking back, you know, if they could go back, what are some things they would do different? And I'll be honest with you, man. I was at TSU at the time where you're at right now, and I thought I knew everything. I mean, I'm telling you, I thought I knew everything, you know. And, uh, you know, going to that thing and hearing those speakers and, you know, Kevin O'Neill from Southern Cal looking at the whole entire room of young coaches and saying, hey, some of you guys need to shut up. You just need to shut up and listen, you know, and hearing somebody like I worked with Dana Ford at Tennessee State saying, hey, here's a great quote. Learn to listen, listen to learn. You know, and, and I just kept hearing some of the same things over and over. And usually when you hear the same stuff over and over, it's, it's probably true, you know. So it, it humbled me and it taught me so much. And I'm sure I did that for countless other people. So the biggest thing was just really sitting down and listening to people that have been where you are, and then they have gotten to where you want to get to. I mean, plain and simple, that's the best, that's the best way. That's pretty cool. How old were you when you, when you, when you all started that? I was a senior in college, golly. Um, that was 2008, 2009. Wow. So when it really, it really got off its feet that year, I think 2009, 2010, I believe, was the first year. Don't quote me on that. But I'm telling you, when I went to the first one and sat down, I mean, I had pages of notes and I just, everybody had something different, you know, and some guys went ahead and started talking about recruiting, which obviously Nate's doing, Asa, you're working towards. So they started building that, you know, like see why Florida State was one of the first speakers. And he's talking about how when he was a GA, he pretty much got a list of the top prospects in his area. He just got all those guys to team camp. And he developed relationships with them at team camp. And that was his niche of being a support staff guy, but, you know, ingraining himself in recruiting, you know? So there was just so many different little nuggets like that that I just tried to take and apply, you know? And, and basketball is all about taking other people's ideas. This was just taking things that had helped people along the way and trying to apply them to where you're at, you know? And you can't take everything, but, you know, there's just so much good stuff in there. Yeah, you're really not reinventing anything. You're just kind of recycling. Uh, yeah, know. yeah, no, for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, obviously, depending on where you're at, you know, can uh, you know determines what you can take and what you can't. You know what I mean? Like one thing I always remember being at TSU, Asa, was like when I was there. Like you don't have this abundance of staff, you know. So you wear a million different hats. Yep. But some people can look at that and say, "Oh gosh, they're making me do everything." Blah 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 blah. Okay, and then the other guy can say, like, wow, I'm getting a plethora of experience. I'm probably doing more than I'm 
qualified for. But yeah. boy, this is going to really help me grow and learn, you know. And uh, that's that's what TSU did for me, among many other things. And I mean, I that that experience I had there was unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad you said that. I kind of wanted to ask you what your time was like at TSU. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I had never been to Nashville before. Okay. I did not know John Cooper. Um, pretty much the reason why I got the job was the staff at Clemson got me the job, which was another thing I learned coming out of uh, college. I thought, you know what, I'll probably just go be the next GA at Duke. I'm sure I'll hit Coach <laughs> K up and they'll just hire me. And I couldn't get anything, so I settled back at my high school being an assistant. And then, like, late August, I got – um, I got involved at TSU, ended up getting off for the job. Like I said, I didn't do anything to really earn it per se. I didn't send in this beautiful mm-hmm. resume with all these graphics. And I didn't do any of that stuff. Literally, Coach Purnell and staff helped me get that job. And uh, I just took it because I knew if I did not I got my master's, and I came back to Coach High School in South Carolina, that probably helped your salary out a little bit. Yeah. And then it just turned out to be the best decision I ever made because – John Cooper still is one of my best friends in the world. Yeah. That experience was incredible. Like, I love the Gentry Center, TSU. Yeah. I still walk around some days. There's a staff member at BGA that went to TSU, and I've seen that. I'm so glad. Like, I mean, <laughs> I loved it. It, it, just, yeah. it just really opened my eyes up, you know, yeah. to a lot of many different things. So it was great. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, so, obviously, you've had a lot of different stops at, at a lot of different schools in the, on the college level. Uh, Let's say, you know, a year ago, did you see yourself taking a high school job like this? Um, did I? Uh, I would say maybe the right one. Yeah. Uh, it was probably something I, I don't know if look down upon is the right way to say it, but, you know, leaving college for, from having done it for 12 years, there's always that, golly, I've worked so hard. Yeah. I've got Because I finally got to the point where I was, quote, unquote, the top assistant. So it was the closest I had ever been to head coach, which is why I left college Charleston and Presbyterian, because I wanted that responsibility. Uh, but I just, you know, I knew I wanted to be a head coach. I never worried about the level. I interviewed at a few Division twos, couldn't get it. And BGA, just to me, wasn't your typical high school job. It just wasn't, you know. When I found out about it, um, the more I got involved and learned and talked to people, I was just blown away from it and, um, you know, just kept praying about it, talking to my wife. And, you know, we just felt like it was a great fit, not only for me, but for our family, because I've got a kindergarten that goes to school there. And obviously, Nate and his family know what a special place it is. It was just a different, it's a different opportunity. You know, I wasn't looking to just go get your average high school job wherever mm-hmm. just to get out of where I was because I loved where I was and I loved the kids where I was at. And I cried with some of them when I had to leave. I mean, it was really hard because I think PC will be good this year. We had worked really hard, but it's just an incredible, special opportunity, you know. So, so far, what has been the toughest transition from college to high school? Just not having your players every day and being able to work with them. You know, Mm -hmm. because as a coach, you know, you're confident in your ability to develop and help them get better. But, you know, when you've got half your team on the football field and you work with them in June and you're at the end of the month and you look back and you're like, man, you know, we really gained some ground here. And then you're like, well, I won't have them till mid-November. It's like, you know, Mm because high school basketball, you don't get that like build up to the season with the guys who play football. Mm -hmm. In high school football, you get July practice, early August. You're building into your first game. You're putting your system in and all that stuff. And, you know, having come from college, I've been fortunate enough to work for some unbelievable coaches, and I've learned a lot. But it's like, okay, I got these great ideas, but, ooh, is this going to be realistic to be able to do with some of these kids when you don't have the amount of time to work with them? So that's probably the biggest thing. I got another question. So you said I have (laughs) these great ideas. So as an assistant coach, how tough was it at times, or how did you go about, uh uh-oh, Sorry, I don't You're know. Okay. You're there. I know. I'm. I'm. I mess with the light. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> um. And okay. So, as an assistant coach in college, how did you go about trying to present your ideas, or when did you? Because obviously, I got right here. Shut up and listen. Um. When did you find? Shut up and listen. And when did you find? all right, this this needs to be said. I I really think this is a good idea that's going to help our team. Well, I think one of the biggest things in being an assistant is feel, you know. 
Yeah. And I don't know how you judge feel. <laughs> I don't know how you, I, I mean, feel is a hard thing, but it's feel, yeah. you know, it's number one, obviously knowing that most of the time your idea is going to get shot down and not taking that personal and being able to walk out of that office with your staff, you know, all on the same page. Like I've, you know, I've been with people that really struggle with that at times. And I've also been some guys that are phenomenal. It's a hard thing sometimes when you're really passionate about something and we're all so competitive. Mm -hmm. Um, But just knowing that's a big thing. Um, And then just, you know, no, you got to know your boss too. That's, that's the, probably the big part with field. Um, And then how to present it, you know, the timing of it's so crucial. You know, what is he doing at that moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, is there a platform for it that y'all typically meet on where new things come about, you know? And then it's, do you have a way of presenting it other than just this great idea that's in your head, you know? Do you have mm-hmm. some video you can show him? Do you have some data you can give him? Um, you know, because he's going to ask that, and you need to almost defend it before you present it, you know? Because mm-hmm. if Definitely. you can do if you can do that, then you have credibility as it's hitting him. You yeah. know what I mean? Because if it hits him with nothing, then he might – it just depends on I me. Mean, he may have just got off the phone with the AD, and he's in yep. a bad mood because they're wearing him out over something. And he may just blow you off simply from the sheer fact of he's just not in a good mood right there, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a tricky thing. It really is. And it's hard too, because your idea might be great. <laughs> you know, it really mm-hmm. might, but, um, but yeah, the feel thing is, is tough, but that's the biggest thing. That's interesting. Yeah. What, that's uh, what, uh, what was the biggest thing you took away from your time as a student assistant at, uh, at uh, Clemson? Um, probably just doing, cause I, I had come from, I played at Erskine. I didn't really play. I was on the team, but I did, I played a few minutes, whatever you want to call it. So yeah. I went from being a player to the guy that wiped up the sweat. Yeah. That was a, that was a hard thing, you know, but the thing I took away from Clemson was just doing all the little things nobody else wanted to do with a smile, you know, going the extra mile with a smile. That was the biggest thing. Going and the I extra took mile, with a smile, smile with a smile. Yeah, <laughs> I took that. I, and I took that and, and I took it to TSU, Asa, because yeah. when I got there, you know, you, you have to be able to get things done on campus at TSU to be effective. Yep. You've got to be able to go over to the business office when so-and-so's got a negative balance on their account, and you got to be able to talk to them, and you need some help, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're not just going to do it if you walk over there and start parking at it. You know, you have to be able to get to know them, serve them, help them, give them a camp T-shirt. You know, you got to develop that and you got to do some of the little things. They may run you around campus, but you just got to kill them with kindness, you know. So that was probably the biggest thing, though, taking that from Clemson. That was just, you know, still to this day, walking by and seeing trash and picking it up and Mm -hmm. just all those little things, you know, which we should all do anyways, but we don't always do it, you know. Absolutely. Go on the extra mile with a smile. That's yeah. Ace, is that the podcast title? I mean, we, I have like seven it's, it's of them. In the running. It's in the running. I got to Oh, y'all, y'all stop. I'm sure I stole that. Do you, I mean, do you want, you have to want to help yourself, shut up and listen, make a list of top prospects, getting a plethora of experience. My, oh, no, that was a different one. And then, I mean, goodness gracious, defend it before oh, you yeah. present it. Go in the extra mile with a smile. I mean, you have plenty of choices, Asa. It's, it's in the running. It's in the running for sure. We'll see what happens coming. Y'all, y'all do what will ever help you and help the podcast. <laughs> um, well, hey, uh, give, us a, uh, give us a little preview of the season, how you're feeling going into this season, first-year head coach of BGA. Well, I, I really don't know what to think because I've only watched a few of the other teams on film. Yeah. Um, but for me, the biggest thing, like when I got there in June, I literally had four practices and then it was team camp games. Yeah. So I just tried to get our guys to play hard, play smart, play together. That was our thing. We didn't play smart. I've got to coach them up on that. We played hard for a majority of the summer and then playing together, uh, probably 50-50. But what I am trying to do with our staff and everybody involved in the program is I'm just trying to create an identity for who we are. Like if you came down and you watched the ninth grade BGA team, like what are you going to see? You know what I mean? Win or loss, like what are you going to see, you know? And for us, that's just the culture of effort and togetherness, you know? Mm-hmm. You're going to see a team that plays really, really hard. And you're going to see a team that's going to play together. And when you leave there today, you're going to say whether they won or lost, like 
they played the game the right way and they played it really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can start there, then I think we can continue to build forward. You know, and obviously we're going to spend a tremendous amount on shooting. Uh, you know, we're going to do some different things offensively. But for us, it's really how we play the game. You know, how do we practice? How do we do the drill? You know, like just just all those little things. More more the how than the what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. That's great. Um, Nathan, do you uh, you got anything, you want to go into uh, some rapid fire questions here in a sec? I don't know why you're asking me. I think you should ask him. Coach, you want to, you, you want to do some rapid fire questions with us? <laughs> what, like I said, whatever y'all think will help. <laughs> All right. Well, they're rapid fire questions that turn into not to be not so rapid fire questions. So uh, here we go. <laughs> we still need a new name for this, Asa. No, no, that's the fun. That's what makes questions. it questions. It, it used to be, it used to be like the Bud Light hot seat or something, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they might want to change. Might want to change the first part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ESPN, I only had a six pack of questions or, or something like that. Well. <laughs> <I'm not talking laughs> <about>. <laughs> all right okay uh last uh last technical hey, when i was an aau coach i got kicked out of a game i got the technical this is going to be hard for me this year i got the technical and i got kicked out of the game because i stood up when one of our kids took a charge and you know when you stand up they give you the second one he ejected me i had to watch it from the track at the <laughs> rec center in north augusta that's going to be hard for me this year if I get one. So. If you, I, I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, that's hilarious. Uh, okay, so you answer the second one. So that one. answers the second one, Asa. If yeah. He's gotten ejected from the game. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, have you ever dunked a basketball on a 10-foot rim? I have not. No? No, and I tried in the pep rally when I was in uh, 10th grade. You know, classically, hit the back of the rim, hold on the rim, act like you did something. You know, probably people yeah. thought it was cool. I could even touch the rim at that time, but yeah. no, no. Interesting, interesting. All right. <laughs> um, okay, you are up three at the end of the game. Uh, they have the last shot. Do you foul or let it play out? Depends on how good of a shooting team they are. I know that's a vague answer, yeah. but, you know, if, if they've got a couple guys that shoot 40% from three, then I'm, I'm definitely going to foul, yeah. you know. <laughs> they're a poor shooting team, and they're a team that – Maybe I would play some zone against, although I'm a man-to-man -man guy. Then I might play it out. Gotcha. So, gotcha. and then what I've got to figure out at the high school level is how IQ, like IQ wise, can we handle that? And I know for sure I've got to teach them how to foul. Like I've already teach them how to foul when somebody's going up to shoot a layup, but I got to really teach them how to foul. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the team and shooting. But I do, I do like fouling. But the other, I know I'm going crazy here, but uh, we're that's why it's not so. It's not so rapid fire. I know, but it's such, it's such a great question and topic to talk about because then it becomes what kind of rebounding team are you? Right. Nate, you saw us. Mm -hmm. We have no size. Like mm -hmm. in a free throw line blockout situation, I mean, we got to be so fundamentally sound. It's a joke, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I had to do in the summer this year is we kept giving up free throw line blockouts. That's one of my pet peeves as a coach. And because mm -hmm. uh, in college, I mean, I saw it every year. You, you'd end up losing a game or going overtime because of free throw line blockout. I mm -hmm. just said, hey, guys. We got a 17 for every free throw line blockout we missed. And like uh, we cleaned it up pretty good at the end of the summer once I did that. Because so. <laughs> every time the kid's about to shoot, I'm like, hey, guys, you know what's on the line? 17 right here, 17. So they know. They're fighting, hey, they're fighting, you know, every single – what is it? Uh, I'm going to miss the saying. Inch and uh, – Tooth and nail. Inch and nail. Is that the is that way you say nail. it? It's tooth tooth and, nail? and nail. Yeah, yeah tooth yeah. and nail. I Something think. like that. <laughs> end, end, end. Anyway, forget it. Um, Asa, go ahead. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, all right. are you leaving your uh, your best player in with two fouls in the first half? I am. Yep. Uh, I sure am. No matter what. I mean, I guess if, if there's a. I mean, if we happen to be up twenty, I'll take him out. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't see I don't see that being the case this year. Although I would love it, but yeah, uh, yeah I'm definitely doing that uh, because. I think down the road, you have to develop that. He has to learn how to do it. So when you get in the championship game to win it, you don't have to take him out. He knows how to play with two. So mm -hmm. I think you got to do it early in the year, even if it burns you. Yeah, that's a good that's, that's a great good. point right there. Uh, okay, uh, go for the tie, go for the win. Uh, are we down two? You, uh, you're down two. Uh, with the ball. You're, you're down two with the ball, yeah. Well, I'm drawing up a rip play to get to the rim with probably something like a crackback behind it. I'll yeah. do something to where we have a drive 
and we have an option to throw out the three. And I'll explain that. We'll take the layup first, the layup or foul. If we don't have anything, you know, we'll have a screen in action for a shot. That would be my plan right now as of today. Got you. Um, casual or professional on the sidelines? Um, as far as how I'm dressing? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, what are you – yeah. You know, I hadn't decided <laughs> yet. Uh, I've, I've said for many, many years, if I'm ever a head coach, I'm going to wear basketball shoes, and I'm not wearing the dress shoes that are so uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not. Right now, I'm going to go with professional for the answer. Yeah, so, we go. I, I just don't – I don't want to. I don't really want to just look like everybody else. But I don't yeah, know. yeah. Wait. So the other way were you that you were taking that question was it how you were going to act, or? Uh, well, I just I wasn't sure, Nate. Uh, but you can ask me that if you want. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to act casual or professional? Uh, whew, I'm just going to be. I'm probably going to be crazy over there. So I, I don't know. <laughs> that you need to add an extra answer to that question because I don't know if I'll hit either one of them. I will try to be professional, but. I just get really passionate and intense by nature. So mm, of course. It'll be it'll be hard to kinda of hold back, but you know, we're such in the early stages of our program that I don't really have time to argue with officials over petty calls when we're not good enough yet. And I'll tell mm. our team that that we just we gotta work, you know. If we get really good and I feel like we're not getting a fair whistle, ooh, I can't wait. I will let them know for sure. <laughs> but if they're if they're being fair and it's picky and we're not playing good, we're not blocking out or whatever, like Man, I, you know, we got, I got to coach our team as yeah. best I can. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Um, early morning practice or evening or night practice? Man, I prefer early morning. I don't know if I'll be able to do it or not because I got kids coming from all over. Uh, but one thing I'm learning right now, it's another thing to your previous question, Nate, about, you know, making the transition, practice time. You know, I'm not going to be good if we got to practice with 70 people in the gym and we're sharing eight baskets with four teams. So, I'm in the process of trying to figure that out right now. Uh, but I love early morning practices. So I do. We, uh, right now, we go early morning open gyms. We got one tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. So, wow. yeah, cool. I like it. I like it. I don't, I don't buy the whole, like, we got to practice near this time because we play near this time. And, yeah. You know, they, gotta, they do need to sleep. You're right. They do. I don't do it every day. Mm -hmm. But they also need to wake up when they don't feel like waking up. Because yeah. if they can only play when they feel like playing, yep. we're not going to be very good. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a great point, Coach. Um, all right. If you were not coaching basketball, what would you be doing? Ooh, we um, Probably something in the finance world. Okay. I, like, I like all that stuff. Yeah, I'm into that. You know, like when we had to try to figure out what we we're going to do to live up here, um, we had to figure out, you know, renting, selling, all that stuff, real estate. But I just kind of – I've always liked all the, you know, the trying to figure out how you can build wealth, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, you picked a bad time to move to Nashville because the real estate market is way too hot right now. And I'm renting. You're exactly <laughs> right. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to buy. I'm going to have to save up a lot of money if I'm going to be able to do that. Oh, so. man. I mean, the market is on absolute fire here. Um, okay, you play any golf? I do. I do. I just don't really have time. I play with my neighbor on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Uh, it is my favorite thing to do outside of faith, family, basketball. Yeah. Um, but with three kids, five and under, you know, being a basketball coach, working at the school, it's just hard, you know. So if I can play once every few weeks, then, then I'll do it. Uh, but I, I love golf. I love golf. And for all the people that act like you can't play golf and be a get, good coach and all that stuff, that is the biggest bunch of crap I've ever heard in my entire life because they sit around and watch Netflix for hours, but they don't play golf and they act like the guy that plays golf and don't watch Netflix such a bad guy because he likes to go out on a course. Some of my best ideas come when I'm just out there with a buddy playing and we're talking about basketball. And yeah, I used to do that with recruiting and all kinds of stuff, go out there and talk to guys. I've enjoyed it. So I hate that that, that myth is out there for coaching. I, th I think not only that, I think there's so many myths out there uh, for younger coaches about just how much you got to work and 24 seven and it, uh, just abandon your family. You got to put your job over everything. That to me is one of the most disgusting things out there in coaching. So, yeah. Sorry. I'm venting a little hey, bit. No, I, Hey, church, we're, we're in it, so yeah. I, I appreciate well, it. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was at Tennessee State, we were fortunate. We were lucky. We were 
blessed. Uh, we had some good players. There's a lot of things in there. Coop did a phenomenal job of just, you know, being – having discipline within the program. And Coop never asked you, you know, what time did you get in or you got to be in by here or that. He trusted people, and, and they would run through a brick wall for him, and we were successful, and we won. Then we went to Miami, Ohio, and it didn't happen, and he got let go. And it, it wasn't either place that had nothing to do with that per se. Yeah. Um, so I just think it's such a such a myth out there. But you do have to work hard. There are some people that will take that and run with it. But, uh, you know, it's not all about how many hours are you in the office. I can't leave till the head coach leaves. That stuff is just so bad. You know, as young coaches, I will tell you all more than anything, man, when you're with your wife or your girlfriend or your kids, do your very best to be there, like actually there with them. Because that was one of the things I looked back from uh, my time in Miami, Ohio. I told my wife was – I was there, but I wasn't really there because that the profession is addicting. You know, it's so addicting. You can always watch film. You could be texting a recruit. You could be looking on Twitter. I mean, it's an addicting thing. and You have to be really, really intentional with your time. So you take care of your family and your home life and your health, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's great advice, coach. That's great advice. Oh, all right. Wait on. What did you shoot on Sunday when you went out and played? <laughs> I shot 39, but it was a par 32. So okay. seven bogeys, two pars, solid golf. If I could have putted a little bit better, I probably could have got 36, 37. But uh, but it was good. It was fun. Good. What? So what's your handicap? Do you do or what do you think it is? You know, I don't have one because I don't play enough. Yeah. But if I had to bet, it would probably be I don't know, probably 16, 18, somewhere around there. You know, I'm, I'm capable of having a few good holes and then firing a double in there, you yeah. know. So, but I just, for me, it fills a competitive void, you know, because uh -huh. I, I don't play all the time. Uh -huh. You know, every year you guys go out on the road, there's five guys with torn Achilles wheeling around with one knee, yep. and you just have to be careful the older you get. When I was younger, I played all the time, but I don't play as much anymore. So that fills the competitive void for me that's still there. You know, so and it's just, you know, it's something you can do the rest of your life. You're outdoors, you get away from your phone a little bit. So it's just there's a lot of good things that I like about it, you know, and I don't play 18 very much because of the timing of it with my kids. But, you know, going to play nine holes in an hour and a half or hour 45. I mean, I, I love doing that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I That's love great. it. Yep. Um, all right. Should every team make a commerce tournament? No. No, why not? Because uh, they don't deserve it. <laughs> uh, well, in college, to me, it's different um, than high school, you know, because of everything that goes into it and what's on the line. Uh, but, I, I mean, I guess you could say there's a correlation. It's hard for me. I haven't been in high school. But yeah. uh, I just think some of these leagues are getting so big. Like, the ACC's got so many teams now. It's just, it's just crazy, you know. But uh, good question. I hadn't put a lot of thought into that question prior to you asking, so I don't feel like I have a, a great answer for you. But that was my rapid-fire response. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. uh, last one, my favorite one, uh, LeBron or Jordan? Jordan. Yeah, why? Competitor, more competitive. Uh, obviously, we could talk for days about that. I like LeBron, uh, but I just – I just like the overall competitiveness of Jordan better. But, you know, when I watched Jordan, I was a kid, so I didn't see the game the same way, so it may have been different. But More mesmerizing than a kid. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. And it's a different game now, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. I mean, LeBron, like, what he can do is just incredible. He had been my favorite player for a long, long time. And then I just kind of just kind of fell out with the L.A. thing, you know? Just, yeah. just I don't know. He lost me there, so. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I'm sure he's really crushed about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably losing sleep right now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But, no, I, I still still love watching him play, just his passing ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just how he can manage the game, almost like a quarterback in football. Just That stuff's fascinating to me, how when guys really know how to just go out there and really, you know, run the show and run the game. You know, yeah. I enjoy that. When you can see somebody's IQ going to work the way his does, it's, uh, it's, it's a oh. thing. Yeah, his IQ is incredible, man. Yeah. He, he, he is incredible. Like I said, that argument is just that's such a hard argument. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, well, Coach, uh, that's all I got for you today. Um, we appreciate you coming on again. Where can people find you on uh, Instagram, Twitter, social media, whatever you use? Uh, I only use Twitter, and it's at Coach Trey Meyer, and that's it. Um, and Trey's T-R-E-Y, and then Meyer's M-E-Y-E-R. 
probably the best way. Um, I don't know that anybody wants to, but my cell number is 706-832-3529. If there's anybody that listens and would like to talk about anything or grab a bite to eat or come to practice, I'm, I'm an open book. So I enjoy, I enjoy this. I appreciate y'all having me on here. I like talking ball with y'all. I remember both of y'all, and I remember you in high school. When I, I believe, when did you graduate? 13. 13. So I remember you being on some of like Andre Whitehead's list when I was at Tennessee State making my TN Prep Hoops account login. I just remember, I remember your name. And obviously, Nate, I was at Miami, Ohio when he was a freshman and played for Lipscomb up there. So I remember both of you. So I mean, y'all got big time bright futures ahead. So I'm, I'm excited to watch y'all. And if there's ever anything I can do to help y'all, I mean, just, just let me know. But I, like I said, I really appreciate y'all having me on. For sure, for sure. Well, as always, you can find, you can find myself on uh, on Instagram at the Ace of Spades with a Z on the end. You can find me on Twitter at Coach uh, at Coach Ace of Spades with a Z on the end. You can find Nathan on Twitter at Coach Nate Milan. You can find Mind of the Coach on Twitter at Mind of the Coach Pod. And you can find us on Instagram at Mind of the Coach. Uh, coach Meyer, uh, thank you again for what you said just then. Thank you for coming on, talking with us today. Um, best of luck to you and your program this uh, this this upcoming season. And uh, we'll be keeping up with you, Coach. Good luck. Of the Dharma, good people get down. Free candy for the masses, sweet with stereo sound. Like the Vaders and the Gators in the breakbeat tune. Automator on the fader corner, shop with the boom. Slapping hands with my brothers as we rise to the sun. Lays on fonts, feel the rhythm of the rhymes you stone.